I have avoided role playing for a large portion of my life. Pop my cherry. Mm, to, pop, <laughs> to pop your role playing cherry. First of all, character wise, you've got a couple of things to choose. There's two things I want you to decide. Uh, the setting is a is a medieval era, you know, typical kind of medieval fantasy that that level of technology. And first of all, I want you to choose a profession. So, you know, blacksmith, carpenter, prostitute, whatever you like, whatever might have existed back then. <laughs> Genuinely choose whatever profession you like. And then the second thing is, I want you to have some sort of goal that requires you to get into the king's chambers or into the king's castle or near to the king. Something something Ooh. like that. Okay. Hmm. See, a profession the first thing that comes to mind for me in terms of profession is um, like shit farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Manure spreader. Yes. Yes, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, thinking Monty Python and oh, have you got the shit over there? Oh, there's good shit over here! <laughs> um... You can be a you can yeah. be a shit spreader. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, but I need a reason as a shit spreader. I need an incentive. What what we, what is my MacGuffin? Well, Why a, do it I could be a need to get goal. into the king's chamber? It could be that you want to obtain the king's shit to spread. Because surely, <laughs> surely that will improve the quality of your plants. Oh, I love that. I love that. All right. I yeah, I'm bought into the idea of, you know, all that the king touches is golden. Yeah. And uh, certainly yeah. that which passes through his rectum is golden as well. Well, it's uh, presumably will... presumably it's experienced the most of the king that anyone ever could. <laughs> so, by like pure surface area contact-wise, it must be the most golden. All right, we're, we're breaking into the king's king's inner toilet, the king's privy, um, so that I so that I can you know spread his manure mm -hmm. uh, over my my crops. Brilliant. Okay, those those two things are sorted. Uh, do you have a name? <laughs> do you have a name you'd like to be called by? Daryl. Daryl. Daryl, it is. Okay. And I'm gonna put a Y in it. D A R Y L. Oh boy. But, but can you spell? I mean, you're a manure spreader in a medieval land. No, that's why I put a Y in the middle of it. <laughs> Nobody does that. You should just spell it <laughs> differently every time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Daryl with a Y? My signature Maybe. down everything. Mm, okay. The town of Aladell is a relatively small, unassuming place. Daryl, the manure spreading uh, peasant of the village, <laughs> <laughs> is widely renowned for his manure spreading skills. And yet there exists another manure spreader on the opposite side of town, <gasps> by the name of Adrian. Adrian. Adrian's manure spreading is, is consistently proven every year to be just slightly better than Daryl's. Asshole. I'll bet he, I'll bet Adrian knows how many N's go in his name. <sighs> Asshole. That must be it. Every year... And it's two. Every year the town of Aladell has a fair where the kind of more respectable professions that you might expect, such as blacksmithery and carpentry, they uh, set out their storefronts on the town, on the streets of the town, and they kind of compete to test their skills. But not even the manure spreaders can avoid this tradition. And so every year, Daryl and Adrian bring forth all the plants they've grown, uh, all of the crops that have been harvested from manure that they have spread across. Um, and every year, a panel of independent judges unanimously votes Adrian's manure spreading to be of a higher quality. He's cheating. He's cheating! I, he has a special shovel, first off. Well... Um, I've seen it. Okay, there's there's also another competition that you didn't mention, and that's where we get, like, there's... We build, like, a little three-by-three-foot kind of an area, and then we, you know, there's we put some shit there, and then we, we spread it out, like, on the top, and then they judge us based on, like, you know, the, yeah. our, our technique 
Uh, and and he he has a shovel that okay I don't know how he afforded this but the blacksmith made it special <laughs> and it's just perfect like one side of it is curved and so it, like it, it smooths it flat and the other side he can like dig into the soil a little it's bit a it's a technological it's disadvantage is that what you're blaming it's right it's unfair Oof. it is unfair unfair however despite Avajan's advanced shovel technology uh, <laughs> this year this year Daryl you are you are certain that you are going to win. Your crops have been p looking particularly fine today. The yeah. the town is alight with this atmosphere of wonder and joy as all of the competitions are going on, and it comes around to yours, and you get a glance at Adrian's crops, and they do not look as good as yours. It's pretty close, but with your you know your expertise from years and years of this competition, you're pretty sure that this time you have it in the bag. It's right, Adrian. Look at the size of my gourds, huh? Huh? What are those? You call those gourds? Huh? Those are tomatoes, all right? <laughs> These are huge. The judges come around Swinging. and they inspect your gourds. And they definitely stop for consideration. They have a nice good look. But you notice one of them slipping a sly glance over at Adrian. Kind of shakes his head. And then, as the day continues, the results are announced. And Adrian has won a unanimous victory for the Bullshit. eighth year in the row. Bullshit! The afternoon commences, and the, the competitions kind of wind down, and then it's the taverns and the pubs and, and the inns of the town. They all start setting out their chairs, and it's a general reverie uh, at the end of the, the fair. And not the good kind of bullshit either, which is really good for fertilizing <laughs> crops. I <laughs> mean the other kind of bullshit. This is bullshit. You have probably taken to the drink... As most would in your situation. <laughs> and Man, I can do that. Having right now. stumbled through the town <laughs> a little bit, you find yourself directly opposite a table that Adrian and his two friends, you don't really know, you've not met them before, but the table that they're sitting and drinking and celebrating their, their latest victory at. What would you like to do? So, on the bottom of my shoes is usually packed a, a thin layer of shit. Mm -hmm. I want to take a shoe off, and I want to just smack it down on the table between them. Oof. Right on their food? Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, that's an upgrade, but yeah, let's do that too. Oh, provocative. You smack down the shoe. Shit, little pieces go spraying everywhere. And uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit just kind of splats one of the, the friends on the face. He's not happy. And Adrian, a little bit drunk, not too much, you can't really tell, but he doesn't seem to be too out of control, kind of starts, stands up suddenly, is like, all right, all right, mate, what was that for then? You just, you just bitter because you've lost again? Oh, yeah, actually, but I don't, I don't say that, okay. <clears throat> I, what, what do I say to Adrian? I say, uh, I say, hey, yo, Adrian, all right? Is this <laughs> how Daryl sounds? <laughs> This is, yeah, you know, Adrian, you know, all my parents, they always say, you know, you, you don't, you don't, you don't got much smart, so you better use your body. So, uh, Adrian, you are clearly, clearly paying off the judges. And I don't know where you get the money because we're both shit farmers here. So it's not exactly a high profit margin kind of an activity, but this is, this is, this is insane. Eight years, eight years straight. You saw my gourds. My gourds are better than your gourds. Your gourds are tiny dow, dow, and dow. just flaccid. Daryl, your gourds, frankly, like your manure, they're shit, mate. And there's nothing you can say about that because I won a unanimous victory again. If you've got a problem with that, why don't we just step slightly to the left of the outside and we can have a go of it, yeah? Alright, yeah, let me put my shoe back on. Now. <laughs> just... Can I, can I, can I, can I like, okay. Let's say, let's say I'm kind of like, you know, he knocked me over, I'm kind of on the ground. Can I at least, like, I just want to, like, kick him in the shin, you know? Yeah, I just yeah, go for it. into the shin a little bit. Just, just cause as much the shin. pain as possible. One yeah. straight in the shin, it smacks him. Yeah. And he starts yeah. hopping on one foot, screaming in pain. Apparently and then kind of cowardly, like, you know, slithered, like, move away a little bit. <laughs> like, I just wanted to get that one in, and now I'm just, you know, I'm giving a him bit. a signal. If Maybe. he's interested, this is all that has to happen today. <laughs> <laughs> He, he is not happy. You notice out the corner of your eye, uh, a man on an opposite table is not watching. Which wouldn't normally be 
conspicuous, but you two have been making an awful lot of noise, and pretty much everyone around you is stopping to watch the uh, the shit show that's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but as you notice him, he seems to notice you. He kind of jer- jerks up straight, and he turns his head slowly. And the face that comes into vision is just haunted. It looks pale, bags under the eyes. This man has not slept for days, you can tell. And as you and Adrian are gearing up for a fight, this guy slowly kind of stands up and comes over. And as he walks towards you, you get a feeling of a strange energy in the air. The fight kind of goes as you'd expect a fight between two manure spreaders to go. This guy keeps on watching you from the side, and you just continually get more and more creeped out, and this, this energy you've been feeling in the air continues to build. And finally, it's at the point where the two of you, you and Adrian, are just wrestling on the ground, and the guy comes over. Yeah. Just as you manage to pin yourself on top of Adrian and get in a few good punches, All right. and he just puts a hand on your shoulder, and for a moment, nothing happens. And then suddenly, pain just racks your body. Everything's gone black and you've got no idea where you are. There are hands grasping and pressing you down against the floor. Figures swim about your vision as you struggle to escape from them. And then, a tortured, horrific screeching. More dreadful and agonizing than any sound you've ever heard before. The figures around you jerk back for just a moment, and then they attack you again with some renewed vigor, and the noise pierces your skull and thrashes around inside. Hello there, a voice says from inside your head and the screaming intensifies. Oh, stop that. This is nothing compared with what's coming next. You feel things squirming and rearranging under your skin, threatening to erupt and tear themselves out, but eventually sinking deeper within you. The room around you retreats down a long, dark tunnel. The screaming subsides. And finally, sleep while you can. Tomorrow we're going to have lots of fun. And the room goes black.